don't care. <laughs> I have a phone too, and it's bigger. <laughs> Yours is more fragile than mine. <laughs> I've dropped my phone so many times, and it's still fine. <laughs> Hello, YouTube. Thank you for checking into Team Forbidden's YouTube page. And I, Soto Sum of the Fanatic, back with an updated deck profile of a, a long awaited return of the Dark Lords. Uh, let's get into it. It's a pure build. We'll have a, uh, we'll have a Layer of Darkness version of it, or at least my take on it a little bit later. So let's get started. First, we have Morningstar, Lucifer himself. And he doesn't come up all that much, but if you can get him off, you go in second. He's pretty good. Just cut Lapoka. I might bump this up. He's basically Return of the Dragon Lords from the hand. Uh, star of the deck, 3HL. Uh, discard her and another Dark Lord card, draw two. I, I really shouldn't have to explain any more from that. Uh, so she's part of. The, uh, I should explain this, though. For those who have not seen the first one, Morningstar is. Basically his own class of Dark Lords. He's basically supposed to be the boss monster. When you summon him, and you're basically going to tribute summon him by using Superbia to get another monster out, you special summon Dark Lord monsters from your deck with different names, equal to the number of effect monsters your opponent controls. And then for each Dark Lord monster you control, you mill a card from the top of your deck in the graveyard and gain 500 life points for every Dark Lord card you control. Tuscatlapoca is the first of the... Um, the second class of Dark Lords which is they all have the effect to pay 1,000 life points, target a Dark Lord spell or trap in the graveyard, spin it back into the deck, and then they get that effect. Uh, heart and Soul, or part from uh, Superbia, of course. Uh, part from, uh, excuse me, uh, from Eat Shale, of course. This is the, the man of the deck. Summons any of your other Dark Lords back from the graveyard. Or any fairy. You can run Chrissia in here, but I'm running pure, pure, no fairy, no Chrissia. Uh, two Zerato, because level eight, and it can do stuff. Three Nastin, and pitch two other Dark Lord cards to summon him. M Dusk, rarely comes up, but you can pitch it and another Dark Lord card to target a Dark Lord spell trap in the graveyard. Well, actually, it says card, doesn't it? No, target uh, target one Dark Lord card, and then you add it to your hand. And Ukabak, he's basically Dark Lord Armageddon Knight. Send any Dark Lord spell trap to the grave. I like him. He's really good. Uh, next up, that's all the Dark Lord monsters are going into the spells. Three Banishment, aka Dark Lord Rhoda. Three Contact, aka Dark Lord Monster Reborn. Speaking of, we finally have it back. Monster Reborn. Why not? Uh, three Allure of Darkness. They're all darks. Only two trading. We've only got five targets. Might bump this up to three if I had a third super rare. You know me. I'm, I don't. I don't care what rarity they are as long as they're all the same rarity. Except it's in, unless it's in blue eyes, in, in which case everything ultra rare. Two desires. This is not an egg nine. You run three of pretty much everything in the deck, so it's relatively good unless it gets ash blossomed, which is why you have these things, or if it has like someone chains like Imperial Order or something stupid to it, in which case you're like, well what the heck am I supposed to do? Uh, fun little tech, I noticed this on uh, another deck profile and I figured I'd try it out for myself, it works really good. Foolish Barrel Goods, basically you just send Dark Lords Bella Trap to the Graveyard and then just use the class 2 Dark Lords to get it back in there. And then for the Dark Lord Trap cards, we've only got one enchantment, three rebellion, three sanctified. Newest card, uh, this one's essentially targetless change of heart, targetless destruction of anything, targetless effect negation and life point gain. This is the one that just came out. Yes, I'm kind of sad it's only a rare, but it's good. I'm just happy it was easy enough to get three up for this deck. Now, we do have an extra deck for this pure Dark Lord deck. I like, by the way, I like running three of the trap cards because you always discard them with the HL. I can understand why some people like only running like one or two of them because they can brick, but on the other hand, I'm like, no, why are you only running so few? You're going to die. All right, so for rank sevens, because we got the um, uh, uh, Nastins, we got Flare Metal and Big Eye, really the only good ones. Uh, aside Tomahawk, but I don't have any links, so I'm not running Tomahawk. Uh, Hope Harbinger, 
I have three of this guy. Uh, you remember there's one in Blue Eyes, and I got one for another deck coming up soon. Uh, speaking of, Galaxy Package, 95 because he's a double attacker. Cyber Blade because you pop any card. Full Armor because pop any face up card. Cypher because give me your monster. And then rank 10s for generic, we've got the big train, the burn train, and then for the little dark engine, we got Sim, him, this, this thing, negates graveyard effects, it's okay, I've never really summoned it all that much. You don't go into the extra all that often if you don't get the superbia, but when you do, the majority of the time you're going into rank 8s. Zombie Sign, easily the strongest rank 8 you can go into. 23, negating a card effect. And then, Spider Engine. Sp spiders, a giant legion of spiders. You had to just say it. I will throw the spiders at your face. How now, brown cow? <laughs> Smack with the hat. Congratulations. This is such a sum of the fanatic. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed and get hats packed.